it's Carrie. In today's 5-Minute Friday, we are going to look at explode versus no explode in systematic searching using PubMed and MESH, aka Medical Subject Headings, as an example. Let's start in PubMed. I'll scroll down under Explore and access the MESH Medical Subject Heading database. Now let's say a researcher came to you with a systematic review topic that included a concept for orthopedic surgery. Let's look up orthopedic surgery. And we'll see that the two options we have are orthopedics, the specialty, or orthopedic procedures. Let's look at orthopedic procedures. We have the definition, the year introduced, the subheadings, the option to restrict to mesh major topic, or to do not include mesh terms found below this term in the mesh hierarchy. So this right here is what we refer to as explode versus no explode. Let me show you the default. If we were to add to search builder, it comes across with the mesh tag, which means that by default, it's going to search these terms that fall below orthopedic procedures in the mesh hierarchy. However, let's clear this out. If we select do not include mesh terms found below this term in the mesh hierarchy, and then we select add to search builder, we get mesh colon no exp, that means no explode. And that means that we're only going to be searching this heading and not the narrower terms beneath it in the mesh hierarchy. Let's look at the difference. Let's start with the broader search. Add to search builder, mesh exploded, and we will search PubMed. We get 344,865 results. Now let's go back one click, and we will select do not include the mesh terms found below this term in the mesh hierarchy. We will add to search builder, search PubMed, and we'll get fewer, 28,159 results. And that's because we have chosen to no explode. So if you are building what you consider to be a comprehensive or systematic search, you know that this is methodical and that every database or platform should be searched in an equivalent way. If you were to choose to explode this term in PubMed, you're going to need to include these terms in your search as either keywords in every other database or as keywords and subject headings in PubMed. Now notice that vertebroplasty has a plus sign next to it. That means that this term has even narrower terms. If we click on vertebroplasty, we'll see that its narrower term is kyphoplasty. So this can get very complicated very quickly. Let me show you how I might begin to build this search in my search documentation. I think what I'll do is just grab the mesh term. So we'll grab this and let me make this a little bit bigger for you. We'll paste it here. And then I'm going to copy these terms and paste them into my Word document. Now I want to get rid of the formatting. We don't want the formatting. We don't care about the formatting. And we want to get rid of the plus sign and we want to include kyphoplasty, which was a heading. So here I've gotten it cleaned up, and what I like to do is just put it in alphabetical order and just take a look at it. I'm going to replace, and I'm going to replace caret p with mesh or, so quote mesh or quote. We'll replace all, and there are our mesh terms. So now this term is exploded in PubMed and can be reasonably translated to my other platforms. So let's just, uh, let's just enter the search terms here. We get 344,865 results, which is what we saw with the subject heading when we allowed it to explode. Now remember that a best practice in searching would be to include keywords and variations on these terms so let's just quickly look at them as a list. We'll replace or with caret p. And what I'm going to do is copy, put them down here, paste. And so this duplication of our mesh terms, I'm just going to replace mesh with tw, replace all, no. I'm going to take out the reversed index terms. They're not really going to help us, so we might want to test them and see. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and add some additional 
keywords. Procedure, or so I'm not going to do it all now because it would take a really long time, but just remember all the spellings um, that you would want to include variations on spellings, plurals, so on and so forth. Ad nauseum until you feel like you've gotten everything covered. You might want to truncate these so that you catch plurals, or you might want to type it out. So uh, let's just do that. In fact, I'll just select everything that has a Y. Y quote will be an asterisk. Quote, replace all. No, now our terms are truncated. So that's just a quick, quick way. And keep in mind, this is not at all systematic or comprehensive. I'm just showing you the beginning of building a search. Now we're going to replace all hard returns, caret P, with or capitalized in PubMed, and we will do that. No, we will just take a look at it, clean it up. I like to do control F, look for or, make sure that everything worked out well, and it looks like it did. Copy it. Now we'll go back to PubMed. We should get more than 344,865 because not only did we explode the mesh term, we added additional keyword terms. We'll click search. 358,936. So that's just a very quick overview of explode versus no explode. If we were not exploding orthopedic procedures, we would just have orthopedic procedures, no exp, mesh, colon, no exp. And we could build our search from there depending on what terms we chose to include or not include. That's how you can explode versus no explode. And if you do explode, you should always be sure to include those terms at least as keywords in your search and maybe even as keywords and subject headings in PubMed. And that way you can translate it to other platforms. It's going to be easier to translate because all of your terms that are being searched are being represented in your documented search. That's Explode versus No Explode. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.